I'm sitting here together with uh, Henrik Österblom, the Deputy Science Director of Stockholm Resilience Center. And you're also one of the authors of a special issue in uh, Philosophical Transaction of the Royal Society. And the issue is about marine regime shifts. What are they? What, what is a marine regime shift? Well, uh, marine regime shifts are rapid change in ecosystems, and they have been documented all over the world. So, for instance, a regime shift can be a very dramatic change in species distribution. If you have the Baltic Sea, you can have a lot of cod, and then over just a few years, you will have a dramatic change where you have a depleted stock of cod and an increase in other fish stock. But there's also other regime shifts in, in habitat. So, for instance, if you imagine a coral reef that's well functioning with lots of fish species, after the storm or other types of major disturbance, this ecosystem may also dramatically change to an ecosystem that's overgrown by, by algae and where there are no fish and, and no visible coral. So these dramatic changes, both in food webs but also in benthic structures. And they have been observed everywhere, and, and this special issue focuses on, on some of these shifts. Okay, so why are they so important to understand? Well, if you're managing cod stock and you think that cod will be around forever, you can sort of fine-tune your management efforts and, and, uh, and anticipate that you will have sort of linear changes according to your efforts. But then there can be different types of disturbances, changes in climate variability, there can be different diseases or other kinds of shocks to, for the cod or for the coral I just mentioned, and these can have dramatic non-linear changes. So, so what you think is a relatively stable state can be actually changed into something dramatic. And this will have impacts on, on livelihoods, on the people who depend on so the ecosystem services that are produced by cods or live corals. It will have economic consequences and it will sort of be, it will dramatically change the systems that you're about to manage. So if you're, if you're understanding that these major shifts can happen, you can also develop contingency plans for, for how to manage those dramatic changes. Okay. So, as a scientist, what are the major research challenges when studying these regime shifts? Well, there's sort of three different kinds of approaches that people are developing now. Originally, people have studied their individual study systems and looking at how one individual driver appeared to have influenced that. Uh, so, for instance, did fishing cause the regime shift in the Baltic Sea? Or did, did climate change cause the regime shift in the Baltic Sea. Now scientists that are looking both at climate and fisheries and possibly other dr drivers of change are looking at an integrated view to try to understand which are the relatively most important drivers for regime shift. So that sort of integrated analysis at individual systems is starting to emer emerge. Another approach is to compare systems across uh, regime shifts. So how has sort of similarities in climate drivers in the northern hemisphere influence all of these regime shifts in similar ways? And I think the third way that's starting to emerge now and that we're exploring to some extent is what are the globally consistent social drivers of change that may influence regime shifts? So are there markets, individual actors, or possibly you know, uh, other social drivers, technologies, for instance, that could have a sort of a consistent, temporarily consistent uh, influence on marine ecosystems globally? Okay. Thank you. Thanks.